Hello, um, I'm gonna show today uh, one uh, or two options in Excel that are really uh, interesting and really useful and uh, they're um, very helpful if you have a table like this and you wanna find or to use um, any one of these values that you have here to do some calculations. So uh, what we have here is the table of uh, constants of vapor pressure so uh, vapor pressure is a physical property uh, that depends on every material and its function of the temperature and there are a lot of equations for calculating the vapor pressure and one of them and one of the most famous equations is the Antoine equation it's used for the uh, uh, calculating the vapor pressure as a function of temperature and what we have here is a b and c are constants that depend on the material and the t is temperature in kelvin and you calculate the vapor pressure in millimeter mercury so you can calculate it from this equation or take the exponential of both uh, sides and uh, it will take this shape anyway so this is just an equation to calculate the vapor pressure and this table is the has the constants a b and c for all components and because it's uh, antoine constant so it's antoine a antoine b and antoine c and we have here very big table and we have almost how many components we have 468 components or materials so um, in what we are gonna show now how to use some options in excel to make it easy for you to uh, extract the values that you want from the table and use them and to reduce the uh, option of uh, or, or the probability of uh, getting uh, uh, wrong numbers from the table so um, let's say I'm gonna uh, look for any one of the components we have here let's look for something that's um, here not down so let's say I'm gonna do calculations for one two butadiene so one thing I can do is to copy this and paste it outside so I have the name of the component and this is let's put Antoine A Antoine B Antoine C and uh, I will say that I'll do the calculations at the temperature of 80 Celsius whatever the the value which is 80 plus 273 to calculate it in Kelvin and I am gonna do the calculations for the vapor pressure here so it is exponent of a minus b over c plus t and close the bracket and this will be millimeter mercury which is this divided by 760 to be in atmosphere so I can do this but um, uh, let's say I want to do the calculation for more than one component and uh, I need to go and search for it in the table uh, let's say component uh, that's here or in anywhere so it's difficult to get the, the number if it's very big table like this so one option in Excel that can make life very very easy for us is uh, to ask Excel to look for the component by itself so I just put the number the name of the component and it looks for a B and C and put them for me so this component is called VLOOKUP so let's see what we have when we see this VLOOKUP so if you sorry if you put the uh, look up oops sorry so you have the look up and then let's see what options we have now it says what's the lookup value what's the thing that is gonna look for in the table and we wanna look for the component so we'll put the component uh, that we wrote uh, its name here and uh, where is the table uh, and it's important to know first how you chose the table so the way Excel looks for the stuff uh, in the table it first looks for this lookup value in the first column in the table and it's pretty important if you choose the table starting from this 
a component number it will not find it it will look for the component name in the first column which is the number and of course it will not find anything so it's very very important to highlight the table keeping in mind that the first column has to be the component name or the thing that you are looking for for but in our case it will be the component name so i'll highlight the whole table starting from column b which is the component name and now let's see what we have next uh, it says uh, what's the index number like uh, so, so the index number means which column shall I look for so what Excel does or, or the VLOOKUP does it will look for the component here in this column and then will extract a number in the same row at the column that you specify so let's say for the Antoine A I'm I have the table starting from here so I know that Excel is looking for the component in this table that's highlighted in green and the first column that Excel sees is just the, the the component name and the second column is the Antoine A so I look for the value that I have in uh, column 2 which is Antoine A and the final thing is uh, just an option uh, if you want to get the exact value or uh, approximate match so uh, it means that let's say you wrote the, no the name wrong uh, forget to, to put a number like one two or uh, forgot a comma forgot something so uh, the excel is asking do you want me to search for the thing that exactly matches the name that you put or if it's not exactly the same i can find an approximate match in our case i'll put it false which is the exact match i don't want to excel to find something that's close to the the value that i want so let's see what we have here so it's now got the value of 16.1039 and 12 butadiene is 16.1039 so it's exactly the same value so this is the same here we will repeat the same here i'll write v look up and i have the table the same table and and now i look for uh, oops i did a mistake the lookup value first it's this and then the table is highlighted the column index number in this case it will be three and false as well now it's two three nine seven which is two three nine seven point two six the same value uh, one thing you can do is to use the F4 thing that we did uh, one time before. So I'll freeze this and I will freeze the table. So uh, I don't need to do the same thing again. So if I drag, I just need to change the column index number. So here it will be 3 and here it will be 4. So just a simple way to simplify the calculation and now it's it's right. So this is one thing that will make our life very easy. Let's say I look for butadiene. Let's say I look for uh, something else, 1, 3 instead of 1, 2. We have 1, 3 here in the bottom. So it got the same values, 15.7727, whatever. But let's say I am looking for something like this, but I did a mistake in writing the name. So I forgot to put the E. And, and since I, I chose uh, to have uh, the, the false option, which means that it has to be an exact match, so it might be uh, kind of not very uh, good thing to uh, revise the, the, the spelling that you put on, and because there might be some uh, probability of writing the name wrong, especially if you have something like this component, it's 1122 tetra. Chloro one two difluoro ethane. So it's if you wanna write this, this it will be very difficult. So there is another option in Excel that will make it's even more easier for us to do this, which is uh, what's so called a drop down list. So drop down list. If you go here in data validation, you'll find that you can uh, validate some criteria. Uh, so that you have something that you can put in this cell and one option is to have a list and in this case you will tell Excel that the value that I can put in this cell has to be one of the values of the list that I'll give to you so uh, 
I need it to be just the components so I'll highlight all these cells so that Excel will only allow me to put one of these values in there. And if I press OK nothing will happen just you'll notice that there is this small uh, arrow here. So let's say I wanna so actually what it does it gives you the option to just uh, choose one of this so if i want to choose this very long component that we talked about uh, previously then it's gonna directly use it as a as an input that i put to the cell and uh, let's say i'm looking for one two butadiene that that we are looking for so it's a lot of components so here it is so it's pretty easy the good thing about this if I did the same thing that I did before and I put a name that's not right it will give me an error message it will tell me that this is not one of the values that you are allowed to put in this cell and you have to uh, revise your input again so uh, in this case we are now are now confident that the value that you're gonna put is the right value and consequently the values of a b and c that are gonna be input to the equation are the right values and you don't need to worry about this anymore okay thanks